uh, we're going to be talking about some current events, uh, some things that are happening, uh, the climate that's happening right now, and preparedness, things you guys need to look out for, uh, and just stay ready. But uh, we, we got this tropical storm heading our way, uh, Hurricane Laura. Uh, the most recent count that I saw today actually was 800,000 without power in Texas and Louisiana. Uh, so I know they are I did struggling. Not see that. Yeah, they're 800,000. Yeah, 800,000. So they're, they're struggling right now. Um, I know a couple of emergency management uh, task force have been sent out down there. So, Right. Um, this is rounded out to a cool, a cool million, a million people without power. Wow. Yeah. Interesting enough, yesterday I was at work. I work retail. And I mean, about 1 o'clock, power shut off. One of the big yeah. box stores. Power shut off, and... We hung out for a little bit, then we ended up going home. That right. whole ride home, I'm just thinking like, all right, I, I got to reevaluate more power at the house, mm -hmm. you know, long term wise. Yeah. But um, I, I didn't realize it was that many people without power. Yeah, wow. it's uh, it's it's get it'll, it'll probably be more than that as uh the storm comes up the north, um, because we're we're probably gonna get hit with it, uh, with some high winds, so. So we just got to stay prepared and keep our eyes on the news and see what happens with this thing. Uh, but, but I know a lot of people are struggling currently down there in Texas and Louisiana. So. Right. Um, like I said, it, whenever I see a situation happen, whether it's weather or, you know, man-made, it's always for me. I always go back to how would I deal with that? Yeah. Or yeah. how how could that trickle down and affect us? Mm -hmm. Because even with some of these um, hurricanes and storms, I think it was Iowa that got hit really hard. Mm -hmm. And again, that's another state that's a lot of food they produce. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, the numbers were like 50% of their crop. Right. And I think a lot of people still take for granted that when you go to the store, the food is going to be there. Right. And it has to be grown, <laughs> you know, right. which might be a couple months. And if it's not grown, then it's not there. So, you know, storms yeah, I mean, is just more than just power. <laughs> it is. I, I, I saw you uh, put up in your story about the Ready Hour food supply. Sh shout out to them. Uh, you know, yes. they, they have some really good uh, freeze dried foods that you can stock away and prepare. Um, and, and it's not expensive. No, it's not. And me, why I went to them was. I was doing, and I've been doing it for a couple of years. You know, I was buying canned goods, um, mm -hmm. pastas, and trying to rotate it. And mm -hmm. I was, I guess it was about last year. So I caught myself with a little couple more cans than I wanted to, where I had to donate or throw out. And right. I was like, man, and if it's a worst case scenario where you have to bug out and leave home, right? that's a lot of weight. One can, one pound, it you is. know? So I started looking into it and it's really not that much more expensive. No, It's really not. You could just get some plain if you want. Actually, they have a a wild rice. It's like a it's like a yellow rice. You right. get like thirty six for like twenty twenty two dollars. Right. And right. it's good for twenty five years, so you never have to worry about rotating it. So it's just like I've been trying to just allocate a certain amount of money, you know, mm -hmm. whether every month or every other month. And right. if I could get at least sixty days, and you do mm -hmm. that every month or two months, you'll be building up a nice supply, and the boxes are not that big. It's no. Hey, I, mean, I got you know, my, I got mine right here. Hey, you see oh, that? oh, oh, there you go. The 72 hour pack. Okay. Okay. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 and the, the thing about these, they're in ammo cans already. So right. for those of you, you know, who, who are already in, in, in the, uh, the, the gun community, um, you'll love it. I mean, so, but uh, again, it's not a sponsor for Ready Hour, but Ready Hour, right. they have but it's done. A you can use. <laughs> right. It's, re it's very reliable. So, yes, yeah, I mean, and, and um, to, to, to your point, I was on a podcast uh, last week and we were just talking about food and I was talking about bu budgeting uh, and not right. getting things that you are not going to eat. Going to the grocery store, getting canned goods that you wouldn't normally eat or your kids wouldn't right. eat or your family wouldn't eat. Um, right. And, and having a budget for your uh, emergency food. Don't just go out there and spend your whole paycheck on food, uh, but put out a budget, whether that be $100, $75, or $50 every month. And little right. by little, you'll start creating a stock 
of food that you and your family can rely on during a hurricane or a natural disaster. Right. Um, funny thing was when you say, you know, pick up stuff that you actually like, mm -hmm. there was a point in the beginning where I'd be like, oh, these are, these cans are too far down. I'm going to pick this up, like some random things. Right. And those are the cans that were bad or I had to throw out. So exactly. again, if you have to use something in your emergency supply, chances or times are not good. Right. And you want to have that at least comfort at having something that you like. Mm -hmm. So that's oh, yeah. a good point. But that budget is, it's really not that hard because People find money to do all type of things that can't really benefit them in the future or it's just yeah. for fun or entertainment, which is all in all good. But yeah. wouldn't you want to have something to eat, drink for yourself, if not yourself, your family, when it mm. does hit the fan, which clearly it's <laughs> all around the board. Oh, yeah. I, 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 th I think FEMO recommends a 72-hour uh, supply of food and water, but I'll take right. that as far as two weeks supply of food and water. Right. <laughs> um, especially now when, when you look at the hurricane that's happening right now in Texas and Louisiana, there's going to be a lot of people without power and a lot of people who are going to need assistance. So the, the process of first responders and emergency services getting to them right away is very slim. So I'm looking right. at a, a, a two week period where they will fully have supplies. They will fully be stocked and people will get to them in a timely manner. Right. It, and, and to that point, too, is when that many people are displaced mm -hmm. or evacuated, because that was it Louisiana, I believe, was it was yeah. they had to evacuate. Right. Now, when you have to they have to go somewhere else. Yeah. So they're coming if up here. You a small town. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Now yeah. you a small town and you have 100,000 people in there now. What right. happens to your food supply of mm -hmm. just going to the store and picking it up? Or that's a lot of displaced people, and the our infrastructure is just so broken down now. Where you know if that many people move to another location, mm -hmm. they can't sustain it. So it's yeah, that food is critical. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and also staying safe along with this virus. I know that's a challenging aspect when people are evacuating or they're being put into shelters, and they still have to keep that social distancing and you still have the virus going on and keeping your family safe and kids from touching things. So I think that's something people need to look at and start putting into their preparedness kits or emergency bags, um, some cleaning or uh, sanitizing items, you know, because you just never know where you'll end up and you'll have to be in close quarters with people. You know, it's strange. I might go a little off with this is as far as it goes with the virus, mm -hmm. um, I got some strong feelings on that. And I don't mm. necessarily think about it as much, but you made a very good point where mm. if you had a shelter that could accommodate 100 people in the past, so what, do they do 50% capacity? Right, right. So yeah, if you have 800,000 people, if they're being displaced and going somewhere else, mm -hmm. that's really almost twice the amount now because when you think about it, it's going to cut it in half because you have to social distance. Mm -hmm. So, wow, I didn't even think about that. That's a very good yeah. point that you can't even go with the regular procedures now. Right. I mean, I think at a certain point, they would cut that off up to how many people they're uh, receiving into these shelters um, or evacuation centers. So I would say to people to prepare their vehicle uh, just in case, you know, you won't be accepted into one of these shelters. So prepare your vehicle right. to for that to be your, your homestead for a little bit until you can get back to home, to your location. Right, right. Which, yeah, um, because if you're evacuating as well, mm -hmm. you know, even 100,000 people fleeing in the city at once. Right. You, traffic is backed up. You don't yeah. have a full tank of gas. <laughs> yeah. You really out of luck because there's no turning off, there's no turning back. That's You're stuck right there. Right. So preparing your vehicle, I... I'm glad that um my job that when I went back a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. it's a little further than I usually travel, but it made me think, it gave me a different mindset, not as relaxed mindset where at my original location, I was only seven minutes from home. So I did take stuff for granted. I still got a bug out bag in the car, but I know I could walk home in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now I'm 45 minutes down the road. So, you know, it's a lot more checking when I, I walk around the car more now, I'm like the tires look good, make sure the gas is fully tanked. I bought another backup um, jump start for the car that also has the inflator for the tires. That's good. I also 
myself, I like to carry the um. You ever use the fixer flat? Yes, yeah, can the can. Yeah. Now, right, if everything is going crazy, you're not gonna have time to unpack your trunk because it's probably gonna be packed. Right. Get out your jack, jack it up, and get that fixer flat in there. At least two cans, because sometimes one doesn't do it, and mm -hmm. you could go on your way. But yeah, yeah. that's important <laughs> to, to definitely maintain and do maintenance, a monthly maintenance check on your vehicle. Uh, just in case you have to go and you have to up and evacuate uh, because your vehicle is what's going to save you in the long run in case you yes. really have to travel a long distance. Um, and to, to your point about the gas, people often forget that most of our gas stations are run off of electricity. So when these things happen, such as hurricanes, uh, people are going to be going to the gas station. And you have to realize that, hey, if there's a blackout and there's no electricity going to the gas stations to pump your gas, you know, you're out of right. luck. So you right. better get your gas before, you know, the rush hits and or your electricity goes off. Um, when it was Hurricane Sandy, I was actually up in New York. I was doing this job and where my mom lived, mm. around the corner, at the corner, there's a gas station. Mm. And there was, you know, the, the, there was a refinery or something that got damaged during the storm. So the gas was real scarce. Yeah. And I remember seeing people lining up with the cars six in the morning, parking up, waiting. And, you know, by maybe one o'clock or whatever, if they did get the gas to the station and you see people just driving off mad or whatever, and cars was like blocks down, just waiting for gas. And that's when it was power. Right. So it's just like, you, you really don't realize how serious it is. You know, mm -hmm. you go wait for somebody, it might be two people at the pump and you got to wait five or 10 minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. not too bad. But a worst case situation, yeah. you might be outside the gas station waiting to get gas, hoping there still will be gas when it's there. Or like right. you said, the pumps might not be working. Then what? <laughs> yeah, and or the pumps may be uh, out, you know, out of gas. And then that's right. when your situational awareness has to come in to be like, hey, this can get out of hand. Uh, you know, the crowd can get rowdy when quick right when there's less resources around so just things to think about but uh sleeping in your vehicle for evacuations uh goes to my next point of americans are still facing evictions during this crisis so you have you know this hurricane coming you have people going to shelters and you also have people just in the streets or already sleeping in their vehicles because they got right. evicted a couple months ago. Uh, I mean, it's, it's getting, it's getting a little crazy. What are your thoughts about that? It, it's a lot to take in and every month, every day is actually going to get worse. So, you know, when it initially hit and people start losing their jobs and they realize, Oh, it's a million, it's a two millions and it just kept getting higher. And, you know, these companies were like, yes, yeah, so I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just go ahead and push back your payments for three months. Right. Well, if I couldn't pay it in March or April, what makes you think I'm going to be able to pay it in three months? Yeah. So it's like it's the system is so broken where mm. it's it's ready to explode. Right. right. So how do you deal with it? I really don't know, because you have to also think, you know, as a person, if you have a property, say it's a two family house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you make good money. You've been making money off of it for some time. Right. And now these people can't pay. What do you really do? Do you really just kick them out because they can't pay? And you know they can't go anywhere and hope to find someone else? Or, you know, if uh, well, that's a situation where you could afford it. Now, if you can't afford it, then I got to get somebody out. I need to put somebody in there because I need money. So yeah. I just see it just getting really, really bad or people start squatting where they're just like, look, man, all respect. You know, we paid you for the last two years. We've always been on time. We don't got no money. We're not leaving. Yeah, yeah. Those, and, you know, as, as somebody with their back against the wall, what would you really say? Like, like I'm right. sorry, as soon as we get on our feet, but we have nowhere to go, so we're not leaving. Yeah. And yeah. who are you going to call the police? Because right now, or the sheriffs, right. <laughs> they're trying not to deal with too much already. So... Right. Right. I don't know the eviction thing. It's gonna get scary because it started in August. They said they're gonna start mm -hmm. pretty much in August. So August is pretty much over now. Mm -hmm. So September, October's coming around. 
Mm-hmm. I, I really don't know what's going to happen with the evictions. I think a lot of people are going to squat. Um, mm-hmm. Or, well, since there's so many buildings that's um, vacant now that's been mm-hmm. vandalized, they might start mm-hmm. squatting in those places. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 those are really serious points. I mean, you, we're talking about people's livelihoods um, and displacing people in major cities. Uh, and, and, and you still have 30 million people still on unemployment. And with the job market, you know, crashing and the opportunities not being there, businesses are downsizing. So, th- so they're finding new ways to make money and they're finding new ways to budget, you know, and decrease their spending. So people aren't really right. necessarily getting unemployed, although there are jobs out there and people are still working here and there. The majority, you know, have lost their job because of this. Right. Um, so losing your job plus uh, the evictions, I mean, it, it's a double whammy on many people. It is. And when you think about it, you know, they've been calling it the retail apocalypse for the last, what, two or three years. Mm. Where Think about how many of those, you know, stores you might have grew up going to right. went out of business. Right. And it's con- it's been happening and now it's even more. So I've heard that, um, you know, J.C. Penney was in financial trouble. Yeah. where Amazon might start turning those into fulfillment centers. And it was like, wow, so is that going to be like the, the company that, mm-hmm. you know, bigger than Walmart that just owns everything and you just have to deal with them for all commerce? Right. It's kind of scary how big they are right now. And they just well, they just said um, Jeff Bezos hit $200 million, $200 billion, the wow. first man. And I'm like, well, yeah, good for you, but are the people under you rich or really happy? Right. <laughs> so as far as the retail stores, I can't see how they will come back. Mm-hmm. Like people what, are what used is, to this. What, like what has been the struggle as far as you working in retail? Like what, what changes have you seen during the last few months in retail? Um. Well, I had got laid off, but right before that, mm-hmm. it was a really sad, it was really sad just to walk in a store. Because I was still out trying to grab supplies while everything was happening. Because I know it, was, it kept getting worse. And I was out regularly. And yeah. for me, it was still, I wanted to see what was going on as well as pick up more stuff. You know, that's when sanitizer was like, man, if you can find a sanitizer, you know, pick me up one. You know, people, you know, Jason, if you get that, get that. I'm like, all right, I'll see what I could do because there's yeah. limits. But it was people was walking around almost in like a day in headlights, like in a zombie state. They were just you, you could see the despair in their in their eyes, like, wow, is is this it? Is mm-hmm. this and then just walking slow and everyone is um but as it picked up, people started shopping a little more, people a little mm-hmm. more cautious. Matter of fact, I went to Aldi's yesterday, one of my favorite prep stores, because you get stuff dirt cheap in there. <laughs> I like to buy my pasta from there because it's like 75 cents, 80 cents a box. Mm-hmm. I'll buy like five at a time and five That's cans of tuna. <laughs> and you know, I like pasta and tuna because you get your protein, you got your carbs. And right. but um, I went in there and I went to go grab some uh marinara sauce. And in the corner of my eye, I see the guy like backed up, mm. and in the corner of my other eye, I see the other lady like, and I didn't realize how seriously he was taking this six feet thing. Mm. And I was just like, for me, I'm just like, I eat my vitamin C, I work out, right. Right. my body's gonna do it more than the mask will. That's yeah. my mentality, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was just really interesting to see how far they were staying back. Like, no, I'm not going to go anywhere near him. So retail, I think, is coming back, but people are being aware. And also in Aldi, they had the, you know, the arrows go this aisle, that aisle. Right. I wasn't really paying attention to it. And then I looked and I'm like, everyone in this store is tra- not trained. I shouldn't use that term, but <laughs> they was definitely going with the program. And I would just stand back like, Wow, you know, yeah. but it's that's how I see retail change. And um, shopping wise, it's still interesting to see how much sanitizer and um, face mask are everywhere you go. I mm-hmm. mean, everywhere. Yeah. You know, the gas stations always have a little bit of everything, right. but you know, just when you just go to certain stores, you're like, they got face masks here, yeah, sanitizer, and yeah, yeah so, they, really, I, they, they, they really stocked up on those things in, in the past month or two. Uh, right. We can see these retail changes, especially when we watch videos of people going in the stores without face masks. And then the people in the stores are freaking out because they don't have a face mask. So some people are taking it more serious than others. Um, but I think that's just the changes that we are seeing now that even though 
you know, we may not feel, you know, the necessary need for it all. Uh, that is, it's going to be a necessary evil um, to walk into a store or to go to the bank or, or, you know, to go into the hospital. You're going to have to do certain things in order, you know, to process what you need to get done. So it's, it's definitely a, a change in setting, a change in our, our world dynamics. Uh, but as far as our world dynamics, the civil unrest that's going on now, uh, especially in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, it is. Um, that whole thing has just blown up. It, it, it feels like there's something every month now. And it's, it's, it's really sad in many ways. Um, but it's also not it's not surprising, but it, it's, it's an awareness that I'm developing now because it's happening every month, because everything is on video because people are taking more uh, insight in, into the civil unrest and, and, and cities going under. Uh, I think it's something that we definitely have to look out for uh, in the coming months and or if you already live in that city, you know, you're already um, having uh, the necessary thoughts and, and situational awareness that you have to be prepared. Right. Um, what I think too is people don't realize is when the camera is gone, the cameras are off, you change the channel, that's still happening in that city. Right. So it might be just an image of a store with a couple of broken windows or whatever. Do you realize how much that might affect just that immediate community or that guy's family? Right. We turn off the channel and that's not it. Right. So when people are getting desensitized to certain things, it's like, no, it's, it's worse than it looks. Mm -hmm. When you read into and it it it's the way they portray the story, they tell a story. People mm -hmm. are like, oh man, that's messed up, whatever, and, and change the channel, but not realizing like how long term effects that are. When yeah. you damage a uh, a shopping area, a district, whatever, that takes time to rebuild. That takes time for people to come back. Yeah, people has lost their jobs, or oh, the violence that we see. Just think about that's just a small fraction of what's actually happening on the ground, because we 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 we're in a state in an age where we can see what's happening because people are live streaming, videotaping. Yeah. We're not catching everyone that's getting beat down, stabbed, cut, whatever, and we're right. not going to hear about all that. So as bad as it looks, we could always think that it's actually worse. Mm -hmm. And from that, um. I won't, I, I won't really touch on the topic with the gentleman that, that fell and, you know, he, right. only thing I'll say about that was the night before I was actually doing some drills mm -hmm. and I was using my sling, which I never use. But that right. night I just sound like, yo, I, I need to just, and I was practicing with it. And right. after seeing that video with the gentleman, with the boy, because he's, he's a young man, yeah. I saw how critical it was to have that sling. So yeah. for me, when I look at things, I look at it on both sides. I look at it as the guys that was chasing them, what was in their mind, because I really didn't know why they was chasing them, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I thought about him, like, if my back is on, if I'm on the floor, could I have done that? Right. And not to get into politics about it, because mm -hmm. however you look at it, it still happened. Right. But are you prepared mentally, <laughs> you know, for that? Yeah. So why we but, train, 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 and do more training. Uh, like you said, just practicing on a daily basis and how important our sling is. Uh, you, you, right. you don't really realize it until you're in that situation and or you see it in action. Um, so for, for, for people who, who know what we're talking about, you know, your sling is very important. If you don't have one, go get one, uh, because that can uh, definitely mitigate a lot of unnecessary precautions uh, that you don't want, you know. And you want to survive that, that that event in the long run. So, but going back to the, the the looting and rioting in your in your own community, it does affect the community. It takes time for communities to get back to where they were, and a lot of businesses won't be going back to those communities. You know, they're they're looking at what's going on. They're looking at you know the the kind of people that, that are surrounding those buildings, uh, and, and the people who are coming into the cities that aren't from there. Uh, they're moving out these big businesses and companies and they probably won't be back and they probably aren't going to another city. They're probably going to do e-commerce, you know, right. That, that's just where we're going at this point. Um, 
But again, it does affect the community. It, it affects, you know, your, your political uh, actions that's happening in that community. Uh, it, it affects the, the departments. It affects your first responders. Um, so I don't think people really realize, you know, the, the damage that rioting and looting does to a specific location. And, you know, it, it takes time for that to get back and get back on their feet. Uh, as far as that is concerned, but it's a very sad situation, but we're seeing it more and more and we're seeing it from city to city. And I think in a previous video that, that, that we did, you know, it's coming to a city near you. And um, we've been t t talking about it. Right. Uh, it's been here too, Richmond. Um, mm -hmm. it, they've been doing quite a few protesting. And one thing that, you know, however you look at it, people's conspiracies, this and that, but there are cases where especially when um, George Floyd was murdered, you know, right after those protests, they was finding along some of the protest routes, pallets of bricks. And right. it's yeah. not an urban tale. It was videos. It was many right. people that right. spoke about it. In the past, they talked about paid protesters. There's evidence of this. So whereby you might have a hundred people that's like, no, we need to go down there and we're going to march. You got another five, six people that pop out of nowhere, and that one it only takes one person to start to start a riot to mm -hmm. start everyone going in the wrong direction, and then it, it turns sour. So when you know we use the term protesters now or the media, mm -hmm. it's almost like protesters don't even mean the same anymore because right. a lot of people are already lumping them like oh they're rioters, mm -hmm. and that's not always the case because. A lot of people do go with the intentions of, look, we're going to march, we're going to hold signs and do the traditional yeah. thing. But then you have these other people that are paid and, you know, you can look it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. But these other with other agendas or they just have nothing to do and they, they want to tear stuff up. Yeah. And they come in and they start tearing it up. So it's like, you know, we're at a point where people want to protest, but can they really protest? And are their protests going to get hijacked? Right. And like we saw with the police, how much can they actually intervene? Because I think they said it was 200 National Guards uh, members that went. And they said it wasn't enough. Yeah. That's so, and I don't know if you saw that video. I don't know what state it was. It wasn't, um, it wasn't Kenosha. It was, but it was some protesters in front of an armored vehicle, like one of the MRAPs. He was in front of there. Right. And one guy, he had an AR and he was yelling at the, he's yelling at the vehicle, whatever. Mm. Somebody inside the armored vehicle, popped the top, throw a smoke, the tear gas came out. Then you started hearing shots. Yeah. I'm like, wait, did he fire on the police armored truck? Like, right. first of all, you're not going to penetrate it. Mm -hmm. But second of all, I was like, what? It? And then you're like, all right, is this just an average Joe? Is this a, you just don't know who's who anymore. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a serious situation. And, you know, here we're all for protesting, you know, definitely protest, get, get your get your voice heard, get out there right. um, and definitely use your First Amendment to do so. Uh, but the, the, all the looting and all that, the destruction that's going on with the community, you know, we're, we're definitely not for that. And, and I would say to the PM tribe uh, right now is not really the time to protest and, and go out there and make yourself vulnerable. You know, we, we, right. we definitely have the issues that we need to discuss and, and we want our voices heard. But right now, you know, it's time for us to, to take it in, uh, protect ourselves and our families and do the necessary things that we need to do to prepare for these current events. Um, so don't put yourself out there if you don't need to um, in this climate, at, at least until things, you know, get, get, get a little slower and, and cool down, but I wouldn't recommend anybody going out there right now. Oh, to add to that too is try to stay informed if there is a protest in your neighborhood or on your route to work. Yeah. Because either way, you might find yourself in the middle of a protest. Right. Or I know there was they was having one, it was about three, four miles from my house, from my home. Mm. And some of the businesses shut down and boarded up real quick. Yeah. So you know, and although that was three, four miles, hey, you never know who's going to straggle off. But I get it. People don't tie to watching the news, but mm -hmm. just try to figure out a way, whether online or whatever, or network with friends to know what's going on in your, in your community. Yeah. Because 
it's one thing to to drive and realize there's a situation and I could take an alternative route. But if right. you get stuck plop in the middle or you're taking mass transit and you're stuck, then you're stuck until it, everything finishes out. Right. Yeah. And, and, and going to the fact of, of being in your car and realizing that there's a protest or there's something going on in front of you, it's important to know other directions and other streets and other routes to get back home or, or, or to get back to work or somewhere safe where you know, hey, I can get out of Dodge uh, if there's right. oncoming danger. Um, and right. th th this is why I, I, I enforce people to, to kind of, you know, look at their Google map, you know, look at their routes home, back home to work, to their local stores, you know, know your streets, know the names right. of your streets, F figure out different directions to get to your home, you know, because the these are the type of things that we are preparing for and training for. Um, so it's only beneficial for you to, to, to look up, you know, the type of streets and routes that you can take to get out of Dodge and to get to safety. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so it's definitely it's definitely a time that that we definitely need to to you know hunker in and kind of just train and and get our mental mindset ready for what's going on. Uh, yeah, I think it's just gonna you know gradually continue up until you know the the election cycle. So that's a whole nother can of worms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It 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 really is a whole nother can of worms when you talk about the election because. Again, a lot of emotion with it, a, a lot of emotion. And I just feel like we're, everything is like a big setup now to a certain extent. Nancy Pelosi, what, Speaker of the House, House Speaker, she made a comment where she was like um, referring to the Republicans that there are the, they are the enemies of the state. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wait a minute, you know, you, you're, you're, you're the government, you know, whatever internal struggles you have, you shouldn't put it out there and you shouldn't put it to make other people angry at them. Like we'll be angry at them for whatever they're not doing already, mm -hmm. but we don't need your hand to guide it. So I just feel like it is just so much instigation happening on, on the parts of certain parties that people can't even think straight no more. People are angry and they don't even know it. You speak right. to some people about, Hey, I'm gonna vote for X, Y, Z. Um, but why? Because, but then they're like, no, 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 no. Without saying that other person's name, tell me why. So it's just like, just being informed is like, I, I, I don't, I don't know how people would get to that point where they just hate someone so much, or they just don't do their own research or think for themselves. Right. And these are some of the people that, you know, you might encounter in a protest or just coming at you. So it's, yeah. Oh, every time I think about the election. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a lot of people just going with the, the program and going with what they normally do and getting comfortable in that setting. You know, if, if I have a family member and they've been voting a certain way for years, you know, I'm just right. going to follow if I don't do my own research, get my own thoughts about it right. and, and get, get, get my own thoughts on that particular person who's running for office. So I think doing your research and having that accountability for yourself um, who you're putting in public office is very important, you know, because people just right. don't want to do the work, you know, they, they, they don't want to research, anything. you know, they're <laughs> right, right. Right. Like even just doing the research for getting prepared, man, get, getting prepared. Mm -hmm. We have the world in the palm of our hands. Right. You could Google anything, survival tips, yeah. how to build a bug out bag. It's right there. But, you know, also you got to be motivated, but, just right. doing the research, you could just learn so much. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't be complacent, you know. Don't get comfortable. As soon as you get no. comfortable, you know, stop, try to pick yourself out of that, that zone and say, hey, right. what's next? What do I need to accomplish? What training do I need right. to do? What do I need to right. research? Yeah. Right. Well, let me ask you this. What type of training you do? Maybe, you know, every other day regularly or? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I do a monthly preparedness preparedness list um so you know i do an inventory m monthly of everything that i have my my bug out bag my get home bag my emergency supplies um even when it com when comes to uh d different tools that i have um and then, yeah. then i'll go to the range you know i'll go to the range definitely brush up on my skills 
Uh, and then, and then the most important for me is my health and my fitness. Um, yes. Because I, we talked about this again, if we don't have our health, we don't have anything. Um, right. So just keeping those thoughts and those, those areas uh, secure, uh, that, that's the type of, you know, training that I do. And uh, also, you know, there's a bunch of things on YouTube that, that you can watch, although you have to be careful of, of what, you know, to take yeah. seriously. <laughs> right. um, but just in discernment and having wisdom, you know, th there are a lot of great teachers out there on YouTube who are giving information um, and, and, and it's free, you know. And yeah. I said, I said in, a, in a previous video that, you know, we don't always have to go to the class, but right now, but when classes do come open, uh, for for the public, you know, we can go to a self defense class. You know, right. we can go take a first aid CPR class. We can get more medical training. Um, right. We can go to to a, you know a farm and you know ask questions. You know, we can right. go to a butcher and ask questions. You know, people who have right. skills, ask them questions, because that that's the right. only way you're going to get first hand training on on different things. So, uh, so the YouTube is great and research is great, but you know the on hand the on uh, hand training is another aspect where you can get, you know, a broader spectrum uh, and get and get the, the most out of your training and actually right. talk, talk to somebody who's doing it, you know. Yes. Hey, the mentality is one of the biggest things because, I mean, for me, once I started and I started looking into certain stuff, it's like I wanted more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted more food. This is not enough information. How can I get more sources of information for more reliable sources? So I encourage everyone to just just get started. You know, even if it's just, you know, a notepad, you always want to try to keep all the information in one spot. So mm -hmm. if it's just a little composition, notepad, whatever, just start writing down ideas, what you want to do, what you what you want to get. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have kids and, you know, like, especially boys, you know, we like stuff like that, G.I. Mm -hmm. Joe and action stuff. If you get them aboard, mm -hmm. then, you know, it, it makes it a little easier and then it's fun if you could get their family. But if the family's not on board, and right. you know, you as the man of the house, right? You're supposed to have everybody ready. Yeah. Where, but to me, it, it gets addictive. Where it's just like, I want to learn more. You know, right. I want to train more. Yeah. And you just keep on doing it. And then when you link up with like-minded people, mm -hmm. you're just like, yeah, man, I want to take it to the next level. And we can also build together on right. the next level. And I'm yeah. happy to say that, you know, unfortunately, I'm happy and unfortunately say that since the pandemic, a lot of people are waking up mm -hmm. and are like, hey. Can we go do this? Hey, can you show me this? And, you know, if I have the time, I'm definitely trying to help people as much as I can. Yeah. But, you know, it's really, I think one of the uh, real critical skill is learning how to research and find information and being able to adapt. So if you don't know how to fix a washing machine or a car or something, find out now and print it out or save it to something mm -hmm. that, you know, a tablet or something where you can, you know, also protect and have that information ready but knowing how to find the information that's one of the first steps yeah i i think you hit a, a good point is getting your family involved you know go take a hike go camping you know have them think about different scenarios you know right have your you know your kids uh, uh an emergency bag and have them include things that they like in it uh right so, so that that aspect is is important to keep your family involved and their own preparedness right you know because I know when I'm ready to go, I'm pretty much ready to go. Right. Now, if you have, you know, an uh, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, and you've never talked to them about anything, and just imagine, like, people in Texas, honey, pick up everything you need, grab everything you need, we got to go now. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You know, uh, do they just grab their tablet and they think they're good? Right. Like, no, the tablet is the last thing you're going to need. Mm -hmm. You need a change of clothing. You know, you need some first aid. So yeah. it's just getting mm -hmm. everybody ready. And, and making sure that, again, doing a monthly inventory with your yes. family so they know where their bags are. They know where the emergency supplies is when there's a blackout. Um, they know where to find the flashlights, you know, so they know as well, you know. Just in case something happens to us, we may know everything, but they can know different things as well. Yeah. Um, that, if you said earlier, tools, I think that's one thing I don't know people think about as much. Mm -hmm. I find myself... It was two weeks ago, I went back to Harbor Freight Tools mm -hmm. and I didn't know exactly what I wanted yet. <laughs> That's how I shop sometimes. And I'll start looking at things and I thought I start thinking about scenarios. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, 
I'm actually going to need more screws because I wanted to do that in the future. I picked up mm -hmm. some screws. I saw they had an axe. I have an axe back here. There's a hurricane. You know, I have mm -hmm. trees back here. There's a hurricane coming. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I got to wait to the next paycheck. But, you know, I'm still thinking in advance. Yeah. And I saw some welding stuff. And I was like, well, when I get my land and everything, you know, my thing is nobody's coming. So right. ah, I'm going to look into the weldings. And, you know, and I just walk through there. And I'm, I'm talking about like a $10, $15 budget. Uh, I let, I, I'm not balling, you know. <laughs> right. I have uh, stuff to buy. But if you do it carefully and budget yourself, you can have everything you need in a few, not everything, most of the things you need in a few months, right. depending right. on how aggressively you buy. But the tools is really important just to fix things. Or does do you know how to shut off the water, the gas, or the electric if you had to? Right. You know, it little things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh, health coach Heather uh, responded, having a large pair of shoes and clothing for kids because uh, they, they grow out of clothes as well. So th th that's definitely important on, in a long-term scenario uh, if you have right. kids because they're going to grow out of shoes and clothing and, and all types of stuff, you know, in, in a couple of years while they grow. So that's definitely important. Because if we have any more comments. Well, so, uh... Let's not forget that we should know how to uh, still sew. That's a skill that I think most people, uh, it's really not that hard. Right. I sewed up my lunch bag the other day because I look at stuff, I count things in the ammo. I was like, I could buy another bag, but that's another box of ammo. <laughs> Grab the needle, the thread. Wasn't yeah. the prettiest, but yeah, it was stitched up. And that brought me to the, I was like, well, you know what? I need to get more thread. And they have like a, it's, it's like a big needle where you can sew like heavier stuff, like nylon mm -hmm. or leather and stuff. Because right. you just never know. And these things are like five dollars, seven dollars, eight dollars. Mm -hmm. Again, you could buy some wings or something like that on a Friday night. And yes, right. it's good and it's gone, but are you prepared? <laughs> right, right. Just the little yeah, things help. The little things help. And, and and I was talking on the po the podcast last week of how we may not know different things, but if we link up and teach each other certain things you know, that's the PM tribe. You know, we have skills, individual skills that we know individually, right. but once we link up, you know, we, we build the tribe and we're able to connect with people and kind of take what you have as a skill and what I have, have as a skill and teach each other along the way. I see a health coach, health coach Heather, she put a cast iron pan and I was just thinking, you know, even with the cast iron pants, I didn't realize I had brought one some time ago. Someone was like, you have to treat it before you first use it. Uh, so meaning like you have to coat it. or And I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. But I didn't know that. <laughs> so, you know, like little things like that. Keep spreading yeah. that information amongst each other. Yeah. The cast iron pants are the best to cook in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, th th that's good. Um, I hope you guys have uh, downloaded. It's free on the PrepMentality.com website, um, the, the monthly preparedness list. Uh, go, go there and download it. Um, and there's some more things on there as well. But just having a list and writing down, you know, what you need to get or what you need to inventory every month, um, just doing the, the, the little things help along the way. And it keeps you organized. Yes. And uh, let me see, live, build, survive. What's going on? Uh, he says the majority of these lost arts went when our forefathers passed away. Check with your grandparents to see what knowledge they have. That, that's a good point. You know, we, we have grandparents that have a bunch of knowledge and how things were in the old days when they didn't have all this necessary electronics and right. uh, all these gadgets and tools. So that's a good point, live, build, survive. Uh, to definitely check in with our older relatives uh, to see, you know, what their knowledge brings to the table. I remember my grandmother, she could never put butter in the fridge. It was always <laughs> on the kitchen table. Right. It's like you just never. So it little things like that. Um, when it gets cold, frig, refrigerator goes out, power goes down. It's cold outside. Crack a window, put it on the windowsill ledge. Right. Little things like that. And you know, you know who's the most, the most durable, who's going to handle this real fine? Homeless people. Oh, homeless yeah. people have been living off whatever they can get for the longest. Right. And I remember my first job, I worked over in Penn Station, mm -hmm. and you start to get to know them because they come around, they'll joke with you, sometimes right. argue with you. But yeah. for the most, they're still people which people don't understand. Mm -hmm. And they'll talk to you, whatever. 
And I remember going back, I took the train back to New York. This uh, was like 10 years later. Mm. They all looked the same. They were still hanging out. And it was Christmas Day. I took the train. Wow. They had Christmas hats on, singing happy, um, Merry Christmas to each other. And and wow. they all looked fine. Like, yeah. as far as I remember them 10 years prior, because they know how to, to, to work the system. They know yeah. what to eat, how to eat, where to get it. And they have a network of where they work together. So right. it's... The homeless people are going to be doing a lot better than a lot of these people so yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it's unfortunate that that they're in that scenario but it definitely has you you look at it in a different perspective you know because they've been out there it's been shtf for them for a long time so they're yes. already in the trenches and they know how to survive mm. out there so um i did definitely send my prayers and blessings to all the homeless americans out there because they are surviving in this current climate right now right yeah yep and you gotta think when it's 100 degrees they're still there right. <laughs> when it's negative five degrees they still been around and they've been doing it for years like i yeah. said i've seen so many people 10 20 years down the line still looking a little aged and it's just like wow but they know how to adapt they know how to improvise right right you learn yeah, a lot <laughs> De definitely definitely i mean i think that that wraps it up for for all the topics that we had tonight but if, did, did you have anything else that you want to share um just it is as bad it is worse than what they're showing us you know me personally from just looking at it and then i know you two looking at different different sources so when you you will see these guys on cnn and they got a, a building on fire and they're recording you're like oh my gosh that is bad right. but you know what down the block, there's somebody leaking, bleeding, hemorrhaging, or somebody crying for their life, and we're not seeing that. So just take that extra few minutes out every week. 30 minutes could change your life to, to help you prepare for the, for the better. When you yeah. go shopping on the weekends, think like you know, think about preparing, not just, hey, what I'm gonna cook this weekend, or you know, we're gonna have a cookout. That's fine. Yeah. Take five dollars, ten dollars, you know, every paycheck. Or if you really want to go at it a little harder, do $25. Go check out your website. You know, right, right. the information is there. Just go get it. Because when it when it really truly hits the fan and it's really, you might not be able to access the information. Right. You're probably not going to be able to access the food. Right. And if you're not trained or have the necessary way to defend yourself, you're out of luck. Yeah. You no, know, th those are all awesome points. Uh, just don't be complacent still ha have that that energy and, and, and that focus and that mentality to keep preparing keep training uh and, and still getting the information that you need to protect yourself and your family uh, but again thank you for being on a uh, live instagram we're going to be posting this on youtube as well in a couple of weeks um but that wraps it up i hope you guys gained something some knowledge some great tips and tricks in this uh conversation uh, thank you all who uh, came in on Instagram Live and from Facebook as well. Um, but I hope you guys stay safe, uh, stay healthy, stay blessed, prepare mentality, and uh, that's it. We're out.